Yeah. Okay, in this video, I'm gonna show you tips on how to get better glute activation. Boxers will find it hard to activate the glutes because they're strong and tight in different areas, such as like hip flexors, the adductors, and the hamstring muscles as well. So even though they got loads of glute exercises out there, such as like uh, glute bridges and side clams, need these little tips and these little techniques to make sure that you're optimizing each exercise. And we're gonna start off with a prone activation. So you're just gonna be laid flat on the floor. And I'm gonna get hands on here. I'm gonna to be touching your glue, your hamstrings, and your lower back here, okay? And all I want you to do is go into right angle here, with your toe towards your shin. I want you to extend your hip, so lift up, and then back down, okay? So I'm gonna have my hand, my finger on your lower back, glute and your hamstring, and I want you to lift up. Okay, go again. Okay, so what I'm feeling there, so lower back is firing up, hamstrings, and then your glutes, okay? So when you're extending and doing these hip extension exercises, try and target the glutes, your glutes are third in line, okay? So what you need to do, you need to make sure that your core is nice and tense to start with, you want to make sure that you're squeezing this glute, yeah? And then raise, yeah, let go. Nice, good. Feel that glute, good. So yeah. switch that glute on and then raise. So this is really important going into the next few exercises. So to progress from that, a similar kind of uh, drill, doing a quadruped hip extension. So hands on, um, on, hands on the floor, knees on the floor. And let's just lift this back leg as far as it can go. So just like quadruped extension, good. And then the other side. So you can see here, there's a lot of shifting, a lot of twisting and rotating. Here, lower back's sinking in. So you're compensating using your back in hip extension. So what you want to do is keep your core nice and tense. I want you to push this leg across the floor, tense that glute, and then raise. Good. And then even then, what I don't want you to do is go, try and go too much. So you go there, tense the glute, go all the way there and rotate. Even if you can go to there, that's gonna be better because it's only a glute that's switched on. Okay. So push out, raise, excellent, well done. So there's limited movement in that lower back now. You can see there that Vlad's controlling his hips a lot better, lower back's not moving as much, and you can feel it more in your glutes now, can't you Vlad? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so this exercise, we're gonna be using banded side clams. Now, this is a popular exercise that I see done across different boxing gyms, but sometimes not done uh, optimally. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna show you how it's commonly performed, and then look at some tweaks in technique to optimize that glute activation. So let's go Vlad. This is what I normally see, hips turning out, knees coming together, this foot coming up here, okay? And not really gonna be targeting the glutes. When you like that, the glutes are switching off here, and then when you're rotating out, using your back, using your TFL, your hip flexors here, okay? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna limit this movement here. Hips are gonna be fixed. We're gonna go, instead of 100% of the movement, we're going to use an 80-20 rule. So this is 20% of the movement, okay? So we're keeping them glutes switched on, and we're just gonna to touch to here, Vlad, which is 80% of the movement, okay? Don't let them knees come together. 20, 80, 20, good. So it's like almost like pulsating. Good, you're feeling that more in your glutes now, yeah? Another thing that you can do, if you don't have the bands, which you should do, okay? You can do an eccentric, so I can push against you, and you're, limit, you're trying to resist me pu pushing you down. You can feel your glutes really firing yeah, up definitely. there. Yeah, good. And this is really good if you were looking for any kind of imbalances between left and right sides for your glute med. Okay, so now we're gonna go on a banded lateral walk and we're sitting in our hips and knees are pushed out. Now a common mistake, what Vlad's gonna demonstrate now is where we step in and then that knee kind of comes in, okay? There you go, yeah. So that's probably exaggerated just a little bit, but we'll step and then, let, then that, let that knee come in. They're kind of stepping with the feet and then the knees are following. I'm gonna reverse that. The knees are gonna be the one that's pushing out and then the foot's gonna follow. And also don't let your feet come too close together as well. So tap and hold, tap and hold, good. Push it out from the knee first, squat into it a little bit more. Nice, and then come back the other way. 
Good, you should feel that much more in your glutes. Good, the same applies for when we're doing our monster walks going forward, pushing out with our knees, pushing out with our knees, and we're just tapping, and then we're holding it in that half squat position. Hold, hold, good. Good, and then go backwards. Squat into it a bit more. Nice, tails point forward. Nice. Good. So, when we're doing a glute bridge, a common mistake is to have the knees flared and hyperextending, compensating using your back. That's going to show it here. Driving up, probably not moving the feet. Yeah, driving up, good. And probably not feeling as you're getting that hip extension, but again, probably using the hamstrings and lower back contributing, not maximizing or optimizing that muscular activation of the glutes. So a few little cues that you can do is, first of all, let's get these feet a little bit closer together, Vlad, and then have these knees aligned with your hips. Stomach nice and tense, lower back against the floor, okay? And then I want you to roll your hips up rather than thinking about that extension. So roll your hips up, good. You can see there already, Vlad isn't getting as much hip extension, but he's probably feeling it more in your glutes. Knees together. There. Good. 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 To make that incre make the activation of glutes increase, what I'm going to do is try and switch off the adductor muscles. So by switching them off, you try and fatigue them. So what, you want, what I want you to do, Vlad, is squeeze my fist as hard as you can. Okay? You're starting? You're starting? Yeah? Go on. No, no. Keep it down. Just stay there, squeeze it for 10 seconds as hard as you can. Let's go. 10, 9, 8, 7, come on. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And relax, okay? If you've got a strong athlete like Vlad, you might want to use a foam roller instead on that. Okay, so stomach tense now, then roll up your hips, maintaining that tension on the, on the, uh, on the face. Only a little bit there, only a little bit. There you go. Then let's go. Good. You can see there. Really limiting that hip extension now, but probably feeling it more on your glutes, yeah? Good work, couple more. You see there that Vlad would probably get in that hip extension. Hamstrings, adductors, lower back. Doing these glute bridges at home, but not optimizing it in the right way. Now he's got some tips that he can use to make sure that he's firing up the glutes, which will help improve his performance and reduce the likelihood of injury.